Greetings, Christy. Uh, here's your final critique for Art 828. Uh, thank you for a uh, good class this summer. Uh, let's look at the work. Uh, my first impression is there are really some um, big, um, high contrast, bold imagery that draws me in and wants to make me look. And that's, of course, always important in uh, art and in photography. Uh, things that are immediately drawn to this image here, you know, these two, um, you know, this one in particular seems to stand out maybe even more than this one, but I like how much bigger things are in that one. Um, you know, it honestly doesn't matter too much. Um, they're all look compelling to me. I like the idea. I like the aesthetics for this, and I think it has a lot of potential to keep being pushed and as you stated in your statement you feel like you're just starting this and I think that's good because I think it's worthy of um, more exploration much more exploration because you know I look at I look at the 20 images here and I don't feel they're the 20 best you can do I think there are probably three or four or five in here that really make the grade or could make the grade and I'm not sure how you would visualize finishing these images uh, would they be large? Would they be small? You know, I don't know if you get much into the printing or if you just send them off for printing. I always think in the terms of print. I'm still kind of, I guess, old school in that manner where I always think in a physical format, which, um, you know, is not, uh, I would say, how most photographs are consumed in this day and age. And, uh, you know, those of us who grew up in that uh, age of, of uh, photographs from the lab and, and whatnot, we're used to these physical, you know, photo albums, things like that. And, and now with Facebook and Flickr and the Internet in general, you know, most images are consumed there. I think there's something really interesting to be uh, explored there. I'm just not that interested in exploring it, though I've seen other work that I find interesting to explore that. Uh, anyways, uh, so... You know, looking at this, uh, when I look at these, I'm, I say like four or five here. Um, I would disagree in your statement that you you say that you had all these images that um, you know the different flowers and they didn't feel cohesive. I would I would somewhat disagree. There are some images I saw previous to the, to what I'm seeing here that I feel feel would flow in here, and I think you've got to make some decisions as I look at this work. Which one of these three? Which one of these three? Which of these two? Uh, which of these two? Which of these three? Um, I think these are all the same here. I could be wrong in that. Uh, you know, which of those five is the best, most impactful? I think it's really got to become, the, um, you know, each flower type or color or whatever it is, um, just gets one photograph, and th and then you can create a, I would say, a lot of variety within that. And, and the style that you're using is compelling, it's interesting, it holds my attention, it want, makes me want to look and I want to click on these things and look at them closer and see the textures and see the details and see the colors. Um, but, you know, right now I think you're, you know, in, in, to me you're, you're in an editing stage. You know, this is uh, interesting. I love the light. I, I like how they're backlit. And I like the drama and the contrast and the fact that I can see different textures that I don't typically see with my eye. And that's, you know, one thing that the cameras um, see differently than our eyes see different, but we don't often think about that because most people aren't pushing that or think, you know, doing that. You're taking this a step further where actually the light that you're introducing is this artificial sort of light. And that allows you to, you know, sort of abstract our world uh, in, a, in a different way, rearrange our visuals of how we see the, these things in a different way, where you get this light shining through this, and we get this glow that we don't typically see this. You know, we just see the light reflected off these things typically, as opposed to light coming through them, and that changes the visual structure of what we see. And to me, that's the interesting part of this, is that potential, and I think that's where you need to explore more. And I know you talked about it in your statement about uh, having trouble with um, different light or, or lights, and then the different flowers, and then light coming through them differently because of how light or dark they were, or whatever. That you know, maybe it could even be the thickness of the petals or the leaves or whatever you're trying to put that light through. And it might be uh, exploring different light sources: a flash versus a tungsten light, you know, versus fluorescent light, or you know, something like that. And playing, you know, just playing with different light sources and and the intensity of those sources uh, might uh, start to open up uh, things for you. So, you know, and, and the thing is, this is a good photograph. 
and this is a good photograph, and this is a good photograph. You know, you got three good photographs here. Now this one I'm looking at, and it's soft. So I would probably discard it, though I'm really interested. Of, of these three, this is the one, well, I don't know, this one has a two. I like right here where I see the overlapping, you know, where, where I get these different um, semi-opaque, semi-transparent areas, and then the overlapping the leaves, and I see those different values, and, and turn, you know, like right here, I love that little value, how that changes there because of how it overlaps differently. The petals behind it, and that light behind it, um, that grabs me. But this photograph I'd check out, it's soft. You know, I think you want them sharp. You know, this one, I really like. I think of these three, that one is the one I would keep. You know, I, I'm trying to decide if I like the little green thing back there. You know, I don't know if I crop that a little bit more, take a little bit off the top uh, with this. Uh, I, In some ways, I like it. Or maybe it's just a little too much. Like, I'm, all right, now I'm cropping right there. Maybe it just needs a little cropping. Maybe it's that black space up there. But and I'm just trying to figure out the balance. There's a nice balance between that and that. But maybe this is just a little, a little too much. I don't know. So I like this image of the of those three. You know, um, you you've got enough here. Don't keep the technically imperfect ones. And and I don't think the tech like sometimes I like to play with technical imperfections. I I I will choose pinhole. I will shoot with plastic cameras. I will do those sorts of things because of the technical imperfections that they bring into it, and I feel it like humanizes the imagery. I I don't think that's what you're going for here. Um, so I would I would get rid of this. Oh no, no, get rid of the previous image. Not this one. I'm looking at this one, and I'm loving it. I love. I love the high contrast down here, but then the softness of what goes on in here. It's like looking at an Albers painting for me a little bit, you know, except more organic. Um, yeah, this is, uh, you know, I would I would maybe crop just a little bit off the bottom, though. I think there's a little too much black space. But I'm having difficult imagining the other ones being more impactful than that. Nope, still like the first one better. This one makes me question a little bit more, but I really like how the first one sort of focused in on, you know, it, it keeps me focused in on here, and that's such an interesting, that spiral shape, and then all the soft, subtle variations of the yellows. Some are a little bit warmer, oranger, some are a little bit cooler, yellow, greener, and there's just this nice play, and I, and I like, you know, but like I said, I want to cut it off right there. So that's the one that I would keep from there. Um, I kind of like how you zoomed in in this one. This is very different than most of the other ones where I see where you get you're getting more of the flower. This stuff out here almost seems overblown, and you might be able to like salvage it in a sense, or at least from my perspective. Maybe some people would like this. This is just a little too hot, uh, I guess. I, I want to back off on it and, and and darken it up a little bit. There are really like I like the glow that you're getting. I love that glowing feeling. You know, I teach color theory, color and design classes too. And you know, teaching students to play and create this glow, you know, they have to mix paint to do that. Yeah, photography you don't want to do that, but there's a lovely glow uh, in this, and and maybe you know, I don't know, I'm trying to decide. Like, I think, you know, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. You're gonna have to figure this out for yourself. Um, but I like how this one, you know, we you really zoom in and you abstract it in a different way, and I guess that's in the end what I would like to see in this portfolio. Is different flowers and and different levels and degrees of abstraction. How much you zoom in or zoom out on them? Uh, I think you probably overall want them more abstract than not. I really like this one. This is you know I think one of my favorites. And it's just the leaves and the foliage as opposed to I think most of the others. Uh, there's more uh, focus on the flower petals. Um, so you know, uh, but I like this lushness. I like this image as it stands. But uh, I think you're gonna you know keep pushing it. And trying to, you know, explore each flower fully and then pick out the best. But in the end, you want to, I, I think it'd be best served to end up with some really zoomed in, close up. I mean, maybe even like zooming in even more on here. Now, see, setting that aside, now I'm looking at this image. And, you know, we just have the one here. The one thing I don't like is this one, I don't know. Um... It relies more on the reflected light as opposed to, I think I'm more drawn to the ones where the light is coming through the flowers. 
simply because of what I said earlier and how that is so different than how we see. Flowers are pretty. Flowers are photographed a lot, you know. Um, we just you have know, thousands of years of history with, with, with cultivating these, these flowers. Um, we find them beautiful and we find them inspirational and they're important to us and they're worthy of our attention and worthy of being photographed. But if you want to photograph in a different way, you know, that's, you know, this is a bit more, I would say, typical in a sense. Though it's very abstract and most people aren't focusing in on what you're focusing in on. And this has some of that, that glow feel and, and like, you know, see, this is what I like right here. See the little veins in that petal? That's what I'm attracted to because that's typically not what we see or focus on with flowers. When we look at the color and we look at the form. We don't get in there and look at the textures. And that's what I think this uh, project has that potential to make me see and feel differently about flowers, getting me in that, that detail. And then also presenting them in this sort of you know, high contrast, your obscure sort of aesthetic. Um, so I'd, I'd go back and play with that. See, this is lovely, lovely, lovely. I love the light and how it flows through this. And I love that stark contrast that we have with the background. It isolates it. That's the beauty of photographing at night. You can isolate these things without having to take them into the studio. You know, um, that's the problem with photography in general is trying to, you see an interesting subject, but how do you isolate it? So they focus on that with all that stuff around it. And this is doing well. And I really like the flow of this. I like the slight diagonal of it. This is also really important down here just because if we didn't have that, I think we'd have to crop off some of the bottom. And I like, and, I, and it gives me a, a counter direction. You know, these all flow down this way, and then this arrow points up that way. So we get a little bit of counter direction here. And that's that little detail is so important. I like this one too. This one I actually focus a bit more on these edges, which is such an interesting uh, organic shape. And then the contrast of them really emphasizes that. And that's not usually, a, I, well, you know, when I look at this flower, I think in do, full daylight, I'm not going to notice that. I'm not going to see that. But I'm seeing it here. I don't see it here. I don't know which one I'd want in the end, you know. I'm not sure which one I would choose. And I think it would come down to having to look at all the photographs that you have, all the flowers, and then picking out, you know, you know, you got 20 flowers, and then you got three, four, five photographs of each. And then it's trying to pick and choose, you know, what's going to work best in an exhibition sort of format or for a portfolio. Um, you know, this, uh, you know, is good. It holds it. It's central. It's, com you know, compositional, uh, radial. Um, I like that it's sort of an inverse of how we, again, typically see the flowers because if we have light sh shining on this, I'm going to see this color area more than before than I see the petals. And this sort of inverts it where the petals are more emphasized than that. So this that's another part of what we can do or what you are doing um, with this, this backlighting, which I think is what's more most effective and interesting thing. And again, I don't know which one's better. I like this one. I like the previous one. Again, I think it's going to come down to, in the end, when you look at all these things, you know, what gives you the best variety of, of what you're trying to do and achieve in here. And what are you trying to achieve? You know, do you have a, a feeling that you get? Are you looking at these things more uh, scientifically? Um, or is it more e emotional? Um, you know, flowers, I think, are uh, thought of as aesthetic beauty, you know, sort of pretty, happy, emotional. Um, uh, yeah. And, and there's symbolic, there's a whole symbology in flowers. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. I mean, we're aware of, you know, uh, you know rose. You know, red rose love, yellow is friendship, but there, it goes way beyond that. Uh, I think in the Victorian age, there's a lot of, you know, sort of stuff and ideas associated with flowers, um, which can be fun to research and understand. I have a very limited understanding of it, just a vague awareness of it. Uh, so, all right, um, I like this image. I'm trying to see, it. is this... These are different, yes, I think. So, yeah, this works. I might actually come in here and, you know, play with this a little bit more. Um, yeah, I, like, uh, I think I could um, pull out some more mid-tones in some of these areas. I, I don't want to overall change the emphasis and the movement. You know, you've got this sort of movement, and it's almost a spiraling movement. I think there are points where I might be able to, you know, like down here, maybe just um, 
soften it a little bit, like bring the, the lights and darks a little bit closer together. Um, but not overall change too much of the movement of the piece. But just so we get a little different contrast down here than maybe up here and a little softer contrast. And that can be done in Photoshop or something else like that. So, uh, so we have this image and then we have this image and then we have this image. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, these are really interesting. You know, the, this is the example I'm saying. You have three, four, five variations. Which ones you choose? I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. And I like this one. How do I choose them? They're all good photographs. They all bring something different to the table. But I think in the end you have to look at the grand scheme. Of, I don't need five. I just need one. I just want one. Um, and then I can look at and get the other, you know, sort of information or feeling or different degrees of abstraction or zooming in on it from the other flowers and uh, you know, construct it in that manner. Now, I like this image too. This one brings up an interesting point um, that I was thinking about, want to talk to you about. And, um, you know, I like this, but this is just a flat black hole and I don't want it quite that dark, you know. And I think we might be able to go into Photoshop and, and pull this out. But probably be actually better to maybe use Lightroom, or I don't know if you use Camera Raw at all um, when, you're, when you're playing with digital photographs. But it can be something uh, to look at. Lightroom is similar, you know, it's tied to Photoshop, it edits photographs, but it's all global editing. You know, Photoshop, we can get into the details and we can just select this. But the one thing that Lightroom does have that Photoshop doesn't is this. Photoshop and or no, excuse me, Lightroom and a Camera Raw have the ability to reclaim some clipped information in the highlights and shadows in particular that I often find useful. So, um, I think this is the last image here. Let's go back to your album, because you mentioned that, you know, if I want to do that. So I went, wanted to look at other images, so I, I did that, and I found this image I liked, and I saw it earlier, and I responded to it. I, 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 though I agree why, maybe why you didn't uh, include it, I like the composition, but this is like a flat black radial thing. And that turns me off a little bit. I want a little more texture to it. Uh, what I did do, though, is I took the liberty of, of downloading it, and I brought it over into, um, well, there's Photoshop, but uh, Camera Raw. And I, I opened it in the bridge. So I don't know if you're familiar with using Camera Raw. If you have Photoshop, you probably have Camera Raw, maybe not. Uh, if, if you get the bridge, well, you have Photoshop, you probably have Camera Raw because if you deal with uh, raw photographs, .raw or .nef or whatever uh, other proprietary raw uh, file format tags there are, that's what, photos, that's what you use to open those raw images and it comes up before it. So, but if you just have JPEGs, um, it doesn't automatically open it, so but you can force open it if you go into the Adobe Bridge. There might be another way, but this is the way that I learned because when I first started dealing with raw photographs many years ago, I had to use the bridge. It didn't automatically open it up in, in, in Camera Raw. When I tried to put it in Photoshop, Photoshop just couldn't deal with it. All right, so anyways, Photoshop still can't deal with it, but now they tied it to, to Camera Raw. Okay, so anyways, what I get in Camera Raw that I don't get in Photoshop are these sliders. And yes, there are sliders in, in Photoshop, but what I find most useful here, you know, exposure, great. I can play with the color and that's kind of nice. The other nice thing about Camera Raw or Lightroom is you can uh, edit one photograph and then you can uh, attach that edit to a batch of photographs. So you don't have to sit there with each individual one if they're all shot in you know, similar lighting conditions and similar problems. You can correct it in one image and then it'll correct it in all images. Um, but anyways, so the two things that I find most useful here are highlights and shadows because you see the clipped information we have right here, that, that line right there at the edge, that's clipped in the highlights, so there's highlight information that we lost. You know, we don't, the curve's not completely contained within this area. Same thing down here in the blacks. Now, the blacks are just clipped a little bit. And you might actually be able to reclaim this information in Photoshop, but I find it easier here in RAW using the shadows. Because if I take this shadow thing and I drag it up, you'll actually start to see, see this little, it's just subtle, little bit of information. I try not to do it too much. I don't want to, and you can see the curve changing if you look in the upper right-hand corner. You see this curve 
you know, your histogram change a little bit uh, in shape, and that's probably a good thing because because when it's at zero, and I think there's clipping up here that's happening. So we bring this down and see that a little bit. You know, I probably don't want to. I try not to go plus 30, but sometimes I have to go plus 40, 50, 60. You got to do kind of what you got to do. But see, just get a little more texture in there. We could maybe drag the blacks up a little bit. That could help us too. Um, sometimes I like the bridge and Lightroom more than Photoshop for this reason, this little palette that I get that, that isn't available in Photoshop. So I want to give a little more uh, detail. Maybe, I don't know if I can maybe just reduce the contrast. It's a little more subtle, like you get a little more subtle uh, changes you can sometimes do. So this image to me um, gets better than when, it, when I opened it or when I looked at it on you know, Flickr. See, it's so dead and flat in the middle here. But now when I go over to Camera Raw, there's texture and detail in there. So I think that same thing could be applied to whoops, I don't know if I where was I? Here, to this image. Like we could pull out some of that information a little bit. And you might be able to pull it out a little bit in here too. Just a little more texture. Um, so that was one of my one of my thoughts uh, as I looked at it. But um, Oops. You know, so looks like you have even newer, like these, maybe pulling something out of those. Um, all right, so I'm doing this a little bit early. Ooh, that's kind of nice too. So you might be even updating this in the next hour before it's technically due, but I'm trying to get a, a jump on this. So, anyways, those are some of my thoughts uh, with your portfolio. Uh, you know, it looks good. It looks interesting. I would really love to see it as you went along and, and it evolved um, and, and see what you happen. I, I totally think you could, you know, with effort, get 20 images out of this. So thanks again, Christy. Let me know if you have any questions.